video we'll be looking at uh, how to improve our lighting model to best illustrate our scene or our object. On screen at the moment you'll see one of my models I'm going to use just to illustrate uh, what I'm talking about. At the moment we've got a uh, the default atmosphere provided uh, by view in terms of spectral atmospheres. Um, so we'll be looking at the sky lighting gain, the light intensity balance and ambient light. And we'll also have a quick look at the decay. But first of all, let's have a look at what we've got based on um, our current settings. So I'll just do a quick preview render. You'll see already it's very dark. A lot of details you can't see within the scene. So what I really want to do is bring out some of those details and improve the quality of the render. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the sunlight. By default, we'll have automatic sun softness ticked. I'm just going to change that down to about one degree, just for the sake of uh, quicker rendering. Again, this is dependent upon your scene, but for this one, I'm just going to tweak it slightly. And we're going to go straight into the atmosphere settings. And as I say, we'll look at our lighting model again, standard spectral. I'm going to change it to global radiosity to better mimic the way light behaves in reality, i.e. the way it bounces from surfaces and produces uh, detail within shadows. The first thing we'll look at are these three sliders. Um, we don't need to look at the light intensity at this moment. Light intensity is determined by the... Uh, obviously the atmosphere, but also the height of the sun within the scene. So first of all, let's have a look at where the sun is relative to our model, and it's quite low down. It's, you know, late afternoon, early morning. So let's just get it up to around late morning. So we already improve the quality of the scene just by rotating the sun. You can see that some details are beginning to pop out on this shadowed elevation of the of the object but it's still very dark so we'll look at the light balance the light balance is all about whether we are reliant upon the sun providing the light or whether we're reliant upon ambient lighting that is lighting which is bouncing around uh, within the scene this slider really wants to go to the left for interior scenes so because this is an exterior, we're going to raise the balance up to about 90%. I still want to make use of some of the ambient light color, but we've already improved the lighting in the scene a little bit more. We're getting a little bit more brightness. We're increasing details. Next one again, ambient light. In this particular instance, we're outdoors, so the ambient light is going to come entirely from what we see in the sun. And as I said before, we're also going to look at this decay slider. If you re remember back in our first image, we have this almost muddy color at the horizon. That's produced as a result of the, um, the decay. So I'm going to drop that down to about 10%, just for the sake of having it still present. And again, we've witnessed another leap forward in terms of lighting quality. So we're already getting to a much more believable render. Go back to the light tab. And the next two items I want, well, three items I want to look at. I want to look at the gain. I want to look at the sky dome lighting gain and the skylight color. Again, for, say, early evening, that that uh, depth of blue is, is fine. But being as we're looking around midday, I'm still going to leave it a little bit blue, but I'm going to lighten it considerably. I'm also going to look at the sky dome lighting gain. This is what's going to start filling in some of that detail that's in shade. So if I raise it, for example, to four straight away, let's have a look at a render and see what difference that's made. So again, what we'll do is we'll compare our renders. Second button in from the left is quite a useful uh, tool where we can compare renders. But I want to compare our first render and our most recent render. So the most recent is in orange 
um, the original render is in blue so let's raise the slider week so we can see what effect we've had so we can see straight away in terms of the quality of the shadow it's much crisper and we can start to see details popping out on the foot or the feet of the the mech and as we go up we can see that some of the details on the shadowed side this cross for instance is beginning to pop out and we're just beginning to see the beginnings of the eye slits um, you'll also notice on the fuel tanks they're better illuminated and you'll see it tremendously on the light and the flags so we're, we're making a, a definite gains in terms of the quality of our rendering I like to boost the gain of the radiosity a little bit so we're, the radiosity determines how much color is bounced around from surface to surface and in this scene I might be tempted to try changing the sky dome uh, lighting gain to six and let's see what we get okay preview render so again you can see that we've made steps forward let's compare the last two renders okay so that was the previous render and as we move the slider up you can see that we are beginning to see more and more detail we don't want it completely visible we still want it to be in shadow because one of the secrets to producing a, a good quality render a believable render and a realistic render is that contrast between light and shade we need a good difference between those two so that it mimics photographic effects and the reality of the world that we live in but certainly with just those few changes we've made a massive difference to our render just have one more quick look and see what effect it has by just moving things back to the ambient just so you can understand and see what difference it's going to make and again we'll do a render now you can see we've got much more detail visible that's the ambient light which is again bouncing around in the scene whether it be affected by haze or fog or any of the objects surrounding the item but you can see again by doing a, a comparison between the two renders we've now got a, a much more detail visible in the shaded area I personally think it's too much uh, certainly if we move this down to 50% you can really see what a difference it's going to make and if we do a render you'll see that the the shadows completely gone it's a much flatter render and that's no good for us we want to be producing real realistic lighting schemes which means that we want detail but not too much light in that detail the other obvious advantage of tweaking this in terms of the um, light balance is we start to see some of our ambient color coming through so if we change that significantly the color of our shadow should hopefully change you'll see it's become darker and again we'll do a comparison so we can see the difference between the two oh, we'll not compare that we'll compare those two you see how the ambient light has changed the color of our shadow remember that that color is going to be quite dark be mixed with the, the black of the shadow almost but hopefully those few little tips and tricks should help you to uh, improve the lighting within your scene and produce better quality renders which hopefully begin to look more and more realistic I hope you found this tutorial useful please remember to check us out on social media and especially YouTube for regular updates on view tips and tricks thank you very much bye bye